Okay, in part C we're asked to sketch the graph of this function, y equals t of t, and then in part B we're asked to interpret the horizontal asymptote. So these kind of go hand in hand. And so how would you go about graphing this function? Well, we could start with the basic graph of y equals e to the t. It's an increasing exponential. And then trace it through some transformations. Multiplying the t here by a negative 0.01 is going to induce a reflection about the y-axis as well as a horizontal comp uh, expansion. And so then it's going to look something like this. Multiplying by 100 on the outside is going to induce a horizontal stretch, or a vertical stretch rather, of a factor of 100. So it's going to look like this. It's stretched a little bit. And then finally I'm adding 70 to it, so that's going to give me a uh, horizontal shift. So, all right, the initial horizontal asymptote was y equals 0. And since I'm shifting it up 70, that's going to give me the horizontal asymptote here of y equals 70. We know what the uh, intercept here is because when I plug 0 into the function, I get out 170. And since I'm restricted to t being strictly bigger than 0, I can erase this part of it. And so, a more uh, detailed graph, this is 170, and then this is 70. And the graph looks something like that. Okay, so that's a rough sketch of the graph. So notice we have the horizontal asymptote y equals 70. What does that mean in this case? Well, um, part D then, as t goes off to infinity, the t of t is getting close to 70 from the right-hand side. All right, we saw that graphically. We could actually see it numerically. If I think of t being equal to a billion, and I plug a billion in to the function, just like we did in behavior for rational functions, you get 70 plus 100 e to the negative 0 0.01 times a billion. So this would be 70 plus uh, 100 e and this would be a big negative up here. Well, what's a negative do in the exponent? Well, flips it into the denominator. So this would be 100 over e to a big positive. If I take 100 over e to a big positive, that's going to be a very small positive. The bigger the number I plug in, the smaller this positive is going to be. And so that's a numerical way to justify what's happening with the horizontal asymptote. All right, so we saw it graphically. Here's the number sense that backs it up. Well, what does it mean? Well, it means that as time goes by, oops, as time goes by, the roast beast will cool um, to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is ostensibly the room temperature. Even though in our model it never actually reaches 70 degrees, um, the 70 degrees is the limiting temperature of the roast beast. Alright, so that'll do it for part D.